So I'm Shannon Ogden. And I'm Jacqueline Allen. We begin with breaking news in the case against Chris Watts, the Frederick man accused of killing his family. Uh, he does not want prosecutors to collect his DNA. Contact 7 investigative reporter Ryan Luby's in the newsroom. Uh, Ryan, he's putting up quite a fight for this. Uh, he is saying it would amount to a violation of his constitutional rights, especially unreasonable search and seizure. Remember, last week, prosecutors filed a motion seeking permission from the court to take cheek swabs from Watts along with finger and palm prints and detailed photographs of his hands and his face. Well, in the last 24 hours, he and his public defender attorney said the prosecution is uh, too, request is too generic. He wants to know why they want to do these kinds of procedures and says the law calls for that. Now, it's quite clear the court expected resistance from Watts because they're giving prosecutors until tomorrow to respond to Watts' arguments. Also just today, we learned prosecutors do not yet want the public to know how Shanann, Bella, and Celeste Watts died. Watts' wife and two young daughters, he's charged with killing, as you know. Prosecutors want their autopsy report reports withheld for now because they say the information could taint witness testimony and have an impact on future jurors. Now the court will have to make a decision on both of these issues in the next week or so. Jacqueline. Earlier in one of my videos, I made a statement that with the same picture that you can actually see a scar on Shanann's neck, which is true. There is a scar there. Um, I wasn't exactly sure how recent that scar was, and I made an assumption that it was a possible strangulation mark from previous incident. But I have, I'm going to retract that statement because I have learned from other sources that she actually had surgery, and that's coming from friends and family. So I just wanted to make sure that I let you all know that. Developments in the murder of a pregnant woman and her two children. I'm glad you're with us tonight. I'm Shannon Ogden. I'm Teresa Marchetta. Let's get straight to Denver 7's Jace Larson. He's in our newsroom. Jace, what have we learned in the last 30 minutes? Yeah, so we have some new court documents here that provide some significant more information. In these court documents, they're saying how the mom's body was found in a shallow grave. And they're also suggesting how the children may have been killed before they were put in those oil tanks. And of course, if you've been following this story, we told you last night, or Jennifer Kovaleski told you how the children uh, were found in giant oil tanks in the southeast part of Weld County. These are the documents providing new information obtained late today. In them, information to suggest Chris Watts' two daughters were put in oil tanks on Monday. In the court documents, they say, quote, DNA evidence would remain on the necks of the decedent children in spite of the fact that they were in oil for four days. The defense asked the judge to order the coroner to obtain DNA right away, and the defense indicates that the girls were likely strangled. A defense DNA expert notes that he needs DNA from the children's necks and says, quote, I have a lot of experience taking samples from dead bodies, getting good results after strangulation. The documents paint a picture of a fight between Watts' defense and prosecutors. In the end, a judge says he will not tell the coroner how to conduct his investigation or order him to get DNA right away. Motion denied. Watts is being held in jail without bond. He is expected to be formally charged with three counts of murder on Monday. Again, what's significant here is that we now know mom was found in a shallow grave and that those children were left in those oil tanks for four days until investigators were able to locate them and remove those bodies. Autopsies were scheduled for earlier today. Live in the newsroom, Jace Larson, Denver says it's more and more. What you all are looking at is a picture that was posted from Shanann Watts' Facebook page on August 9th, exactly four days before she went missing. Now, she was home at this time. She didn't leave for Arizona until the next day. But I'm not sure when this picture was taken. I'm not sure if she was home or if this was sent to her, but she supposedly posted this to her Facebook. And from what I gathered in the comments, it was blamed on the children, which were ages three and four. And I think something to the nature of, well, at least they covered it up or something. I'm sorry, but I don't believe that the children did this. Kids at that age do not think about death. And 
I don't see Shanann thinking this was very funny. However, I mean, it does look like she maybe tried to put some humor behind it. So I just wanted to share this with you all. Didn't know if you all had seen this. But I find that very disturbing, to say the least. Another thing I find disturbing is the fact that Chris Watts requested DNA first from the children's necks. And then when they ask him for his DNA, he's like, why are you asking me for this? Well, if you want to claim your innocence, you would think that you would cooperate and give your DNA, considering that you're stating Shanann strangled the children and not you. When his story keeps changing, supposedly when he confessed, he actually stated, quote, I killed them all. But he had to actually speak to his father before he would actually tell the truth, is what they said. So, let me know what you all think. Leave your comments below. Please pray for this family. I'm sure they need prayers upon prayers right now. Much love to you all, and God bless.